Welcome, fellow travelers of the cosmos. We humans have an innate fascination with the great unknown, constantly seeking to unravel the mysteries that lie beyond our pale blue dot. And what could be more intriguing than pondering the nature of existence, or rather the cessation of it on alien worlds? Today, we embark on a morbid yet captivating journey through our solar system, exploring the unique and often gruesome ways one might meet their demise on each planet. Buckle up, space cadets, as we delve into the lethal landscapes of our celestial neighbors, uncovering the deadly secrets they hold. From scorching heat to bone-crushing pressures, each planet presents a unique set of challenges that would make survival, let alone a pleasant afternoon stroll, utterly impossible. So prepare to confront your cosmic mortality as we investigate. What would dying on every planet be like? Our first stop brings us to Mercury, the smallest and innermost planet in our solar system. Now you might think that being closest to the sun would make Mercury a blazing inferno, and you wouldn't be wrong. But it's not just the heat you have to worry about. See, Mercury has virtually no atmosphere to speak of, which means no cozy blanket of air to distribute the sun's heat or protect you from the unforgiving vacuum of space. So picture this. You're standing on Mercury, exposed to the full fury of the sun with temperatures soaring past 800 degrees Fahrenheit. Your precious bodily fluids would boil away in an instant, leaving behind a desiccated husk, forever baked on the surface of this unforgiving world. Next up, we journey to our nearest planetary neighbor, Venus, often dubbed Earth's evil twin. Don't let the name fool you, there's nothing remotely hospitable about this place. Venus boasts an atmosphere so dense and toxic that it makes a pressure cooker look like a tea kettle. Imagine the weight of a thousand elephants pressing down on every square inch of your body. That's what it would feel like to stand on the surface of Venus, assuming you could even reach the surface before being dissolved by the scorching sulfuric acid rain. Suffocation, crushing pressure and corrosive rain, not exactly a recipe for a pleasant vacation. Ah, Earth, our home sweet home. While we've covered some rather unpleasant ways to die on other planets, Earth has its own unique set of dangers. We've got everything from natural disasters like earthquakes, volcanic eruptions and tsunamis to more personal threats like diseases. And well, let's just say our fellow humans can be pretty creative when it comes to finding ways to shuffle off this mortal coil. But hey, let's not dwell on the morbid. Earth is still the only known planet in the universe that can support life as we know it. So despite its dangers, it's still the best game in town. Chapter 4, Mars, a thin red line between life and death. Our next stop takes us to Mars, the red planet, and a popular destination for aspiring space colonists. But before you pack your bags for the Martian frontier, let's consider the less glamorous aspects of life, or rather death, on this dusty world. Mars has a very thin atmosphere, about 1% as dense as Earth's, which means you wouldn't last long without a spacesuit. The lack of atmospheric pressure would cause your blood to boil, and the lack of oxygen would well, you know, make it rather difficult to breathe. And if that wasn't bad enough, you'd also have to contend with constant exposure to harmful radiation from the sun. Chapter 5, Jupiter Gas Giant, Gravity's Graveyard. Now we're venturing into the realm of gas giants, starting with Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. Forget about solid ground. Jupiter is a swirling mass of hydrogen and helium gas with no surface to speak of. If you were foolish enough to attempt a descent into this monstrous world, you'd be crushed by the immense atmospheric pressure long before you even came close to anything resembling a core. And let's not forget the storms. Jupiter's great red spot, a storm larger than Earth, has been raging for centuries. Getting caught in that would be like riding a tornado through a blender. Chapter 6, Saturn, lost in the rings of death. Ah, Saturn, the jewel of the solar system, renowned for its stunning rings. But don't let the beauty fool you. This gas giant is just as deadly as its larger sibling, Jupiter. Like Jupiter, Saturn lacks a solid surface, and its atmosphere is composed primarily of hydrogen and helium. But Saturn has another trick up its sleeve winds that can reach speeds of over 1,000 miles per hour. That's faster than the speed of sound on Earth. You'd be torn to shreds before you could say Galileo. Chapter 7. Uranus, an ice-cold farewell. Next, we journey to Uranus, the ice giant tilted on its side. Uranus might not be the largest planet, but it's certainly one of the coldest, with temperatures plummeting to minus 371 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, you might think that being a giant ball of ice and gas, Uranus wouldn't pose much of a threat, but you'd be wrong. The atmosphere is a toxic mix of hydrogen, helium, 
and methane, and the winds can reach speeds of up to 560 miles per hour. Chapter 8 Neptune, the windswept deeps. Our final destination brings us to Neptune, the outermost planet in our solar system. Like Uranus, Neptune is an ice giant with a frigid, hostile environment. Temperatures can drop to a bone-chilling minus 392 degrees Fahrenheit. And the winds here are even more ferocious than on Saturn, reaching speeds of over 1,200 miles per hour. Imagine being caught in a hurricane force wind that's colder than the coldest place on Earth. You wouldn't just freeze to death, you'd be blasted by ice crystals at supersonic speeds, not exactly a peaceful way to go. Outro The Final Frontier Reflections on Cosmic Mortality. So there you have it, a cosmic tapestry of demise across our solar system. From the sun-baked plains of Mercury to the windswept depths of Neptune, each planet offers a unique and often terrifying way to shuffle off this mortal coil. But as we've journeyed through this morbid menagerie of planetary perils, I hope you've also gained a newfound appreciation for the fragility of life and the remarkable resilience of life on Earth. For despite all the dangers our planet throws at us, from natural disasters to our own self-destructive tendencies, Earth remains the only known haven for life in this vast and unforgiving cosmos. So let us cherish our pale blue dot, for it is in the face of such cosmic indifference that life becomes all the more precious. Subscribe!